Well, folks, a beautiful day. It's been about a week since we have seen that flaming ball of fire in the sky, wherever it is. There. There. Haha. -ha. Okay, so. Anyway, feels kind of nice out here. The sunshine may warm up those trees and give us a little extra push of sap coming off of this big run. Uh, we're headed out. Probably have about a 750 to 1,000 gallons of sap to collect. I'm sure it would be about three trips with the sap wagon. But boy, it does feel nice today. These are the days that you really enjoy maple season. So, there we go. All right, we'll see you in the woods. Well, here's one of the first stops. Uh, looks like I barely caught this one in time. It is about a half an inch from going over the edge of the barrel. Nice sunny day, got the sugar house uh, cooking. Got some steam coming out the cupola. And not near enough wood for all this sap. Drinking up the profits. Why is there a bowl in a cage? You know how you put cats in a cage to keep them away from stuff? You put a bowl in a cage to keep the cats from getting to it. Guess you got a draw? Finished it off? So it seems that uh, in my haste to get all the maple lines up, there was one line that I forgot to tap. Apparently, I just walked right through it and didn't get it tapped. So we're out here a couple uh, weeks late, tapping another 10 trees. Oh, there you can see the sap a dripping, flowing pretty good today. That's cool when it does that. Well, so I got those few extra trees tapped. Back to the Jeep. Back to the RO. Here we're pumping some pumping sap out of A run. Overflowing barrel. I don't know what it is about these trees. And you can kind of see here, they are not real big trees, but they produce like crazy. I think a couple things got going for them, uh, the 3 16th line, and it's a steep slope, and it's also a north slope. So what I'm seeing is those tend to be the best producers. So sitting here, cooking away some maple syrup, Got my comfortable chair, have my cooker kitties, my sugar shack kitties, my sugar shack puppies, all enjoying the warmth. I think the cats are only here because they smell food. Because cats are selfish like that. But Katie, on the other hand, her. She has been our faithful sugar shack companion dog for just about the whole time we've been making maple syrup. So she's about as relaxed as I am right now, probably a little more. Well, we've been doing a lot of cooking and all of our storage containers are full. Now, normally, we would uh, roll that over there in our little yellow wagon. But the little yellow wagon has a problem. Each of these milk pails, we have about four gallons of syrup in, give or take a little. They're fairly heavy. Probably, what do you think, Wyatt, about 60 pounds? 
50 to 60 pounds. You want me to start dumpelating? Yep, you can start dumpelating or whatever you're doing here. Don't splash. There's uh, the product of last night's canning session over here. About 15 gallons of syrup. Are you sampling? Testing. Testing. Quality check. Very important to do those on regular basis. Yeah. So hopefully we have here about 30 gallons of syrup. But we had to get some of the cans empty for today's cooking session. How's that sample? Pretty good. Now, here's the little yellow wagon we normally haul our syrup on. But as you can see, the wheel fell off. Catastrophic failure. Yeah, you do know what Kenny Rogers would have to say about that, don't you, Wyatt? What? You picked a fine time to leave me, loose wheel. Are you not amused? No. Looks like somebody's working on getting every last drop of syrup off of the piece of wood. So we're headed out this morning to gather some more syrup, uh, or gather some more sap. Looks like this run might be coming to an end. Still don't know. Trees still seem to be moving. Right now, just putting the sap sock. That's essentially the sap filter in the tank. So all the sap passes through that. And uh, it's a pretty large pour filter, but it keeps out most of the larger debris. We try to keep the sap as clean as we absolutely can. Gives us a better quality uh, product in the end. And it just makes things a lot easier as well. well. Last night I was out in the woods and checked this and it had about 50 gallons to go. Uh, and I thought, and it was slowing down, so I thought there'd be plenty of room. Well. It went, you can see, this tote is nearly full, just about overflowing with sap. So anyway, another full tote to take back to the house. Been a good maple season so far. Uh, just a little extra tidbit of, just a little extra tidbit of information here kind of interesting that one of the reasons that I had the idea to do the maple is because my dad liked maple syrup but it wasn't even real maple syrup that he that he started with it was uh, it was the imitation homemade maple syrup uh, mom would just make it out of sugar and water and and maple flavoring uh, but dad always had to have that over the uh, the corn syrup you know store-bought Aunt Jemima type uh, syrup that, that's not real syrup and that's what got me liking something a little bit different other than the typical corn syrup breakfast syrup uh, and then I think my dad too they started buying real maple syrup and then when I got married we started buying the real maple syrup and after dad passed away uh, I got to think I, I wish he'd have been alive for it because uh, the year after he passed away, I got the wild hair to buy 20 of the old-fashioned taps to hang buckets on to see if we could make maple syrup, and, and it worked, obviously. Uh, the year after that, I bought 300 more taps, or no, I think 100, then 300, and then 500, and it just kept growing from there, and now we're right at 1,000 taps. And that's a little bit of the story behind uh, why we do the maple syrup. And anyway, another reason I just like being out here in, in the woods. Uh, no better place to be in the winter. January and February is kind of a slow time on the farm anyway. All right, back at the RO.
quick connects all on, open the valves. Everything there is ready to go. So every now and then, it works just perfect once you get the evaporator really hot and you're dealing with concentrated sap to begin with, that you can get a near continuous draw. Uh, this draw has been going on for several gallons for sure. Uh, a couple nights ago, I had a draw like this speed last for over 30 minutes. So it's always nice when it works out perfect like that. It's right at or just above that seven over. And if you time your firing up right, it'll just continue like this. Well, folks, we're in the sugar house again. Uh, it is an absolute beautiful day outside. Sunny, about 50 degrees. And amazingly, the sap is still flowing. It is a uh, Wednesday, and we have not had below freezing temperatures since a week ago Sunday, and the sap is still flowing. Uh, just almost unheard of to have a sap flow that long. So we are very, very, very thankful for that. Uh, perfect day for good evaporation air is nice and dry boy it's just rolling off I think we're cooking about 60 gallons per hour right now the concentrate and uh, right now this part of the season we've really only had we had one short run where we had 500 trees tapped and uh, we got a, about 10 gallons of syrup from that and then we also uh, we had well, really, that was it. Then this this run after the cold spell, and we are we've got about sixty to seventy gallons of syrup so far just from this one run. So once again, very thankful for that. Uh, a sap run that long is is absolutely unheard of. So, or at least I've never experienced it before. And we'll take what we can get. Uh, just another beautiful day in the in the sugar house. Got a nice boil going on here. We freshened up the pans, drained it, and cleaned the bottom. The niter was starting to build up pretty good. And that just increases the quality of the syrup a little bit more too, I think. Uh, so the, the bubbles are a lot lighter because it had been getting pretty dark. Uh, not that it doesn't have good flavor, but it's just not quite as light as I would like it to be. So we gave everything a good cleaning and uh, we are back in business now when you do that though it takes a while to get back to the syrup temperature in your pan right now we're only at about three over boiling point so we've got to get up to seven over the boiling point and that usually takes a little bit to concentrate it but that's the scoop for now there's the guy that just cleaned up the sugar house made everything look really nice in here for the tour that's coming swept the floors, organized things. And there's the, the Sugar Shack kitties. This is Sasquatch. Say hi, Sasquatch. And there is Sylvester. My, what big eyes you have. We are headed out to check the sap flow in the new sugar bush. And so far we've had seven days in a row where this sugar bush has given us well over one gallon per tree. And wow, it has done it again. There it is and it's early in the evening the sun is still setting we've been collecting this one about nine to ten o'clock each day or each night so it's still got some time to flow it has still produced well over one gallon per tap today 
and I can hear it running. There you can see the sap level. And that makes eight days in a row that uh, this new sugar bush has produced at least 250 gallons of sap, 225, 250. I have never seen that happen in 12, 15 years of, of syrup production. We have just been so tremendously blessed with a sap flow that technically by, uh, by all standard or by common, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, common knowledge tells us or that you shouldn't really get a sap flow that long after a cold spell. It's been, it's Wednesday, and it was last Sunday night, I think was the last time we had a freezing temperature. That's like 10 days now that we have not had freezing temperatures, but we are still getting a sap flow. So just so blessed to get this kind of sap flow. And it's been so uh, steady and it's been easy to, to handle. Uh, we've been able to keep up making the syrup. We have, we've been able to process all of our sap within 24 to 48 hours of it flowing. And even though the temperatures have been above freezing, they haven't been real high, uh, which has kept the sap nice and cool. So we feel like we're producing still a nice quality syrup. And uh, we hope that continues. So anyway, head back to the house, give this a few more hours to flow, see if it gets all the way to the top. Bringing in the sap. Sent the kids out to collect at the new sugar bush. Looks like they've got almost a tote full. What, no sound effects? <laughs> 